people usually pick drums or piano first and you pick trumpet, which is... Yeah, I mean, I, I was also a beatboxer. I'm, I am a beatboxer, so I would just... So I would just do that, you know, on the bus. Any any chance, I just was always going. I had to make noise, music, or whatever. So I had I mixed that with the drum sets, and that's how I formulate my beats and stuff that I make now. I just hear it in my head, maybe make a voice note, and I beatbox it. So when I go back to it, I kind of know the skeleton and I form around it. Um, wow. But yeah, I, I I got really nice at the trumpet. Um, I was first trumpet in jazz, symphonic, marching band. I was a drum major, but a best musician in my high school. I played taps for the opening ceremonies in my town for like. Veterans Day, Memorial Day. I was the bugler in my Boy Scout troop. Um, I would play at different churches. I was touring at like a young age, just playing hymns and stuff. So yeah, music is very prevalent. A lot of people don't know that, but I wouldn't be here making videos if I didn't have that um, stage presence from doing solos in high school and church and performances. So yeah, classically trained and trumpeted. Hey, what's going on? I'm Keith. I'm here at DreamCon 2023. You know, they know me as the director, the planet guy, the artist, fashion designer, streamer, whatever it is, Keats did it. So thank you for everyone out there supporting. Thank you for everyone supporting DreamCon. But we are here with Black Girl Gamers. I look forward to this one. Okay. Because I've been watching you for a while. Really? A while. And then a lot of people in our community love you too. Thank so you. Thank you. It, yeah. it, it only makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because not only do you do the, everyone knows you for the planets, but you also are known for your music too. True. So the question I have first, because you're fluent in Japanese, right? Negative. No, I only speak English fluently. I actually, my Spanish is pretty good too, but yeah, no. Wait, you did a skit. With Japanese though. Yeah. And it, it was, it sounded very legit. So when people say that, I imagine, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio, he did like Blood Diamond, but he doesn't speak that language. So you get the script, you translate it and you rehearse, you rehearse, rehearse. And the point is to make it sound like it's natural. So you I guess that. that, you know, goes to show the work I put in. So I, I like that. So um, I would like to ask, so, did you decide to like start learning Japanese after that then or? I didn't. Uh, even going to Tokyo, I went to Tokyo or Japan in April. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really, I brushed up, but it was a lot. You know, with everything, I kind of have to, I do so much that I have to pick what I want to spend my time doing. Just learning a, another language completely isn't feasible right now. Mm -hmm. So watching, I can kind of get to the point where I really, if I watch anime, I watch sub. And if I'm doing something while I'm watching it, I can kind of know what's going on, but it's not more so understanding the language. It's the, you know, the score helps if it's something dramatic going on. Sure. Or if, you know, if it's a huge nani, it's like they're questioning something or just the tone. But I don't know, it's more of a feeling. Okay, and speaking of anime, because mm -hmm. I know you're really massive within the gaming and anime scene. Do you remember the first anime that really impacted you? Yeah, uh, Cowboy Bebop is the first, my first introduction to what anime is. So I was hanging out with my older cousins, I was really young and they were older, so they took the remote for me and said, sit down, you're watching what we watch. Mm -hmm. And they put on Tsunami, and I just heard the ding 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 And uh, my family is very into jazz. And, you know, my dad, he's a bass player, piano, classical music, and all that stuff. So I, that was the first time I had seen cartoons mixed with, like, a hip-hop type of jazz element. So it just really, like, struck me. I was like, oh, this is dope. And just the animation and the art. You know. Okay, and then you mentioned your dad. So yeah. is that what pivoted you to doing music when you got older? Uh, no, I mean, I've been doing music my entire life. I, I grew up in a family, so a little background. Um, born and raised in New York and my family, I grew Wait, up with my part? mom, dad, uh, Long Island, Amityville, like the horror house. Okay. But my dad is from the Bronx, so he, did well, he got a job, a good job, and he moved his family and raised his kids in Long Island, just outside the city. Mm -hmm. So when I grew up, I had an entire music room. We had a drum set, we had basses and guitars on the wall. We had a full grand piano, we had um, drums, and we'd go to, I don't know if you know Sam Ash, it's kind of like Guitar Center, but we'd go there for fun. Wow. Yeah, and just like play the drums and stuff. We'd get a new instrument. So music was like our pastime. So 
Also, my family, my second cousin, his name is Alan Tucson. Uh, he wrote the song Lady Marmalade. He did this theme for the dating game show. This is old stuff, but like, Où les vous coucher avec moi? So, what? yeah, he wrote that. He, he did? A, he has a statue in uh, Louisiana. Yeah, New Orleans has a statue that I saw. Uh, but yeah, it's since he's older, it's not like I can tell that to everybody and they know like that. But when I say live in Couchet, I was like, oh wow. So that just runs in my family. And I don't know if it's some type of genes that go with like writing, but he's he's a writer. You know, he wrote all these songs. So I think my strongest uh, ability is kind of writing and stringing things together and concepts. But yeah, music, I picked up the trumpet. Uh, in fourth grade when I was 10. And it was kind of like, instruments was like a Pokemon in my household. Like you're going to have one, so pick what it is. We don't care what it is, we'll get it for you and you are going to learn it and you are going to practice. You're gonna know your scales, you're gonna know your circles of fists. You know, you're gonna read music, bass and treble and work. So uh, I didn't pick up the piano. My sister picked up the piano, uh, but because my older sister did it, I was kind of like, the boy, I don't want to do what my sister's doing. Well, so. that's what was going to be my next question, because yeah. people usually pick drums or piano first, and you pick trumpet, which is... Yeah, I mean, I, I was also a beatboxer. I'm, I am a beatboxer, so I would just... <laughs> So I would just do that, you know, on the bus. Any any chance, I just was always going. I had to make noise, music, or whatever. So I had I mixed that with the drum sets, and that's how I formulate my beats and stuff that I make now. I just hear it in my head, maybe make a voice note, and I beatbox it. So when I go back to it, I kind of know the skeleton and I form around it. Um, wow. But yeah, I, I I got really nice at the trumpet. Um, I was first trumpet in jazz, symphonic, marching band. I was a drum major, but a best musician in my high school. I played taps for the opening ceremonies in my town for like Veterans Day, Memorial Day. I was the bugler in my Boy Scout troop. Um, I would play at different churches. I was touring at like a young age, just playing hymns and stuff. So yeah, music is very prevalent. A lot of people don't know that, but I wouldn't be here making videos if I didn't have that um, stage presence from doing solos in high school and church and performances. So yeah, classically trained and trumpet. Wait, so if you wasn't a creator, would you have went into like a mus being a musician and just doing instruments on a professional level? Cause I could see yourself like being a part of the uh, orchestra for Square Enix and all sorts of cool stuff. I mean, it's, it's a kind of a blend because at the same time, yes, I love jazz music, I love classical music, I love the trumpet, but at the same time, I was listening to Missy Elliott, you know, Eminem, 50 Cent, you know, all these people, and I, I like hip hop, you know? So once I started to get a laptop and I could make beats, I wasn't just like, you know, oh, this is not, you know, Beethoven's fifth concerto. Like, I'm like, nah, <laughs> I'm gonna make some drums that slap, 808s and everything. So I started to make my own music and write the, write the songs and start to figure out how to make hooks versus bridges. Uh, and I came out releasing my own music and I, I thought I was just gonna be a rapper. Like I thought that was the, I knew I wanted to do entertainment, but I thought that somebody would have to pick me up and you know hire me for these roles and everything. I didn't, I would just, it just didn't click that I could get a tripod and come Make up with these platform. ideas. Yeah. Just like, you know, I was fans of like Caleb City, RDC, you know, all these people that are making skits. And it just got to a point, like a breaking point when I was like, I have so many ideas that I just throw away that I know are good. I'm just gonna make them myself. So that's how that kind of came to be. Okay, cause I do want to talk about the platform for a second because like I mentioned before, a lot of people know you for the planet piece, but they don't see everything else. Well, mm -hmm. I see everything else because yeah. um, I love your content. But um, do you remember the first piece of music where you were just like, you know what? This is something that I'm just going to put out into the universe and see what happens. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was really early on. Probably a lot of people don't even know about it, but I, I made this song called Dumb. Uh, I got a beat, I didn't make the beat for it. I, I searched the beat and it starts off like, I don't got a voice like Bryson. I don't got a whip from a dealer. I don't have six foot like a checklist. You probably want a nigga with no glasses. I can, pro I can promise I can put you in a mansion. I can promise a Versace for the fashion. I just want you to be mine, once you make it rewind. So like when I did, and it was kind of about like 
it starts off the intro. So that was like the hook, but the intro is, you know, all right, so she has 9,648 9, followers. She's following only five. Mm -hmm. I, I got a chance, you know? So it's kind of like that whole social media thing. Like, you know, you can see this girl, she's beautiful online, but like, there's really no chance. So how do you kind of break that mold? It's like, you know, you, you got all the Snapchat points, you got all this, but like, you know, at the end of the day, you left me on request, so nothing right. is gonna really trans. So it was kind of just me breaking that, creating this world and this character and this kind of love story with it. But it was like, yo, like I was really in my bag writing this. <clears throat> it came from like a genuine place and I released it. And my dad, who is very uh, <clears throat> present in my creation, like one of my biggest supporters, uh, he didn't like the song. Because he no, he didn't like it because uh, he was like, he's like, the name of the song is dumb. So the hook is like, you got me feeling dumb, dumb, dumb. You got me feeling. So he was like, you don't want to call yourself dumb. Like you don't want to bring yourself down. But relative at that time, that was like my biggest song. So like it blew up. I did performances, and this is when I was living in Florida. So that really taught me how to structure songs, verses, hooks. Uh, I I took a stab at singing, you know, for the hook and everything. But I, I kind of everything just fell into place. You know, all the things that I, all the YouTube videos, learning how to make beats, learning how to write, record myself. I record myself all the time. Mm -hmm. So it that was like the first thing that everything kind of clicked to now I'm at like a different level and I can build on top of this. Well, I want to talk about your dad for a second because mm -hmm. with your dad, he didn't like the song, but was there something specific that you remember where he was really proud of you for what you did? Ha, huh, this is gonna sound bad, but like <laughs> my dad makes a point to say he's not proud. Like he doesn't like, he, said, he always says pride is a sin. So like he, the way he looks at it is, so he has two children. My sister is a doctor. She's three years older than me. She's a doctor in chemical engineering. She's won every award in the building. Like she's now a fellow at Carnegie Mellon. But he's like, what if I had a third child that was average? You know, would I not be proud of them? You know, would I, you know, y'all are doing great things and it's awesome. And I don't even know how, you know, y'all do this, but I'm not gonna say, you know, I'm proud because well, he's very like existential with this. He's just grateful you know, that his kids are doing well. But um, he he does get hype over the numbers. Like he can't really fathom. He didn't really get social media for a long time. When I decided to, you know, change my major in college and pursue this entertainment route, he was like, do what you do. But then I was like, yo dad, like I got a million overnight. And then, you know, oh yeah, as we've been on the call, it's at 2 million now. And like, as we're talking now, it's at three. And he's like sitting there refreshing it with me. This was the first Planets <laughs> oh, video. Okay. And he's like, yo, it was like 1.1. It was like, he was like, how many video, how many views does it have? And I'm like, 10,567,036. And he's like, okay, so 10,000. I'm like, no, 10 million. Like just the numbers, he doesn't really get like social media. So he kind of, through me, he's able to see like, oh, like social media, is a thing because my dad is like in his sixties. He still has a flip phone, but I'm, I'm glad that I was able to bet on myself right. uh, without him even knowing the possibilities that content creation has. Because I kind of had to see into the future with uh, noticing, like, hey, RDC, there are people out here doing it. You know, my family won't get it, but I know that I have the potential to be an independent content creator. So I just stuck with it and. I, I was able to show results to where it's like, okay, there's there's a platform here for you. Okay. I love that answer. And that kind of goes into my next question that I had. So you said that you got a lot of your following overnight. Yeah. And you bet on yourself. So you was in college. Do you remember like what you were doing at the time before you said, fuck it, I'm gonna do this full time and just bet on yourself completely? I actually had a plan. So I went to college, I went to FIT, um, Florida Institute of Technology. And I didn't know, going into college, I didn't know what a, I didn't even know about college. They didn't really prep me. I come from a very small town, so they didn't prep me to go to college. Uh, so I didn't know what a cumulative GPA was. So I really goofed off my first semester, just enjoying college, you know, partying, whatever, staying up late. Um, I'd go to class, but like, if I missed homework, I wouldn't be too upset about it. And I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll make it up, you know, next semester. And then it's like, but what about your cumulative? It's like, my what? It's like, yeah, if you do bad starting off, it's gonna 
drop. you know, drop your, it's gonna negatively impact whatever. So I was like, oh no, I got a 1.17 my first semester. And I was like, no way, I just didn't. So I, I really buckled down and I got like three O's, but my, my major was mechanical engineering. And I just knew that I wanted to create things. And I thought that the only way to create things as an adult is to learn the maths and sciences behind building things. And then that's how you build stuff. So if you wanna make inventions, you do that. But I, I was just a creative, I was finding myself, you know? So I was a creative, but doing the course load of mechanical engineering and looking at people around me, I just noticed engineers work for other people. They're just given schematics and you you have to know the math and you have to do the, the CAD work mm -hmm. um, and create these models and then you give it to your boss and then they give you the next one. Like I was like, I'm not, I'm not built for this like hamster wheel of, right. you know, I wanted independence and in creation. So once I realized that I uh, did some like soul searching and I was like, all right, what do I want to do? I'm an entertainer, you know, and I was doing projects, uh, all my like English projects, I'd make songs, like I'd, I'd do raps, like I'd do projects, I'd make videos, I'd kind of turn the projects into a fun way to execute it. So uh, I was like, you know, I'm going to change my major to marketing. What am I going to do from that? All right, well, I like computers and tech and IT. So I'm gonna get my degree in business administration marketing, mm -hmm. graduate, bring my GPA up, get a job either in LA, New York, Miami, or Atlanta. I chose Atlanta, I'm gonna move there, get an IT job. So I was working IT for three years while I was uh, doing shows as an artist, as Keats. Uh, I was meeting people, networking in Atlanta, and I'd go to my job and I would manage 35 law firms, um, nine to five, sometimes weekends, and I would be, you know, work my nine to five, then do a showcase at 10. I probably wouldn't go on until one, and I'd kill it, like, cause I'd, I'd start my sets with like beatboxing, and I'd do a backflip at the end of it. So people were like, yo, who is this in Atlanta? Like, cause usually you just get like the lean rap. Right. So I was like refreshing. So a lot of people would put me on their stories, and then they'll be like, yo man, I have this event coming up. Like, you know, we wanna have you there. Like, you pretty dope. Mm -hmm. So. I would get a lot of, just from doing a show, I'd get like three other shows. So every, for like the first eight months, I had a show like every, a like couple shows every week. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was just building my following, but these were like smaller social media. So like after every show, maybe you get like five or 10 followers um, and then they show you and then you keep dropping music. Um, and then all that kind of persisted until the pandemic. I went through a lot of stuff, but like when, when right before the pandemic, like 2019, November, that's when I got TikTok and I, I blew up on TikTok within two weeks. And then when did you quit your job? Uh, so I quit my job. I was able to quit my job from, so if that blew up in November, 2019, it was a year. So probably October of 2020. So you gave yourself some cushion. I, I mean, I had to, I had to quit because my, my Planet merch was doing too well. Like it was, I was packing up hundreds of orders at a time. I was getting, like UPS was mad at me. So I'd do the pre-orders and they would come in, UPS would drop like 40 boxes at my doorstep mm -hmm. and I would have to unpack it, um, do the X, I'd have like an Excel sheet of like 14 pages and I had to shut the website down to prevent orders because I couldn't do it in a reasonable time. If not, yeah, I couldn't get so, a sweatshirt. Yeah, I would be, <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, I would have to drive to the post office. I pack it up at night, drive to the post office, and I'm still working, but I come home, uh, pack it up, take multiple, sometimes a day, I would take like four trips to the, I'd fill up my car to the brim mm -hmm. and take four trips to the post office daily. Um, and it was a blessing, but like I, I started to, my work was being impacted and like my team lead could sell, but my, my work was so supportive of me. Like they bought shirts when they saw it and I showed them the planet skits and everything. And they were really supportive, but they were like, yo, like, um, if you do need to do this, like we understand, but like, you know, we can't let it impact our clients. So right. I was like, you know what, I'll, you know, I'll put in my two weeks resignation, I'll train whoever. Um, but yeah, I was, I was killing it. They still haven't found my replacement. Wow. Yeah, it's been like two I'm and a half that, years. I'm, you know what? And I'm glad that they are really supportive oh, no, of for real. you they were. switching over, you know, because mm -hmm. not a lot of jobs do that. Even some of my skits, like I did some like Apex Legends skits or I did like my movie Private Heist, they let me use their space. If I need like office space, they'll mm -hmm. they'll open it and like let me just close. Like they're, they're really awesome because they, they saw it from like the ground up, you know? That's dope, man. Thank you. Wow. Um, Cause I know there's people out there that's just like, they just want to quit their job and just go full throttle. And you you need to have a plan before you 
just jump ship mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, you 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 want to plan as much as possible, but it, at the and a lot, it's not always easy, you know? Cuz yeah. there's ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. Um merch isn't always going, brand deals don't always come in, so you have to have a plan uh and you just have to be very critical and analytic about it. Absolutely. So, is there anything that you want to talk about that I was not able to bring up? Uh, I mean, so I do want to talk about the new planet series that yeah, I have. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Let's talk about that. Uh, so with the planets, a lot of people knew them as skits. There's 25 parts mm -hmm. that are in the TikTok form and they all take place and they all took place in my bedroom. So for a while, you know, I've kind of been known to go on hiatus with the planets, but whenever I do drop them, people love them. So. It was a while, I kind of stopped, I held back and kind of got into streaming, uh, gaming, and I met a lot of new people. And with the planets, I kind of got into this mode of like, it's hard to have 25 parts and continue to be innovative. Right. And I'm the type of person, I don't want to, I could easily, I don't want to pimp my content. I could have easily done things lackluster. I could have made a bunch of meetings about something that don't really hit, but like, I really only drop my content if I'm like dying laughing. Like if I'm like really impressed by it and if I think it's good, then I release it. But um, I felt like I would have been pushing it just to push planets and like maybe that, you know, pushing my videos would have helped with merch and would have done that. But I'm like, no, I'm not having the most fun I know I could have with it. So I invested in a camera now. After I went to Tokyo, I got this, well, I went to Tokyo with the camera that I bought and 4K, beautiful camera. And now I was able to create an entire TV show. So I started this YouTube series for the planets where it has its entire intro. You know, I'm shooting on locations. Mm -hmm. They teleport now. Mm -hmm. They can communicate by ripping holes in dimensions. Like it's it's a completely different level I'm, and I'm editing it all myself. Uh, I have a few people helping me with it, but it's it's gonna expand the universe. I mean, I wanna take this to a point where, you know, if I had, uh, you know, as the support grows, that's the thing, this series can grow as big as the support goes because, you know, right now we're at like 10,000 views on, I dropped the first two episodes and the next, oh, the I third know. goes, <laughs> the third release is Friday. Um, and it, it's really cool because as it begins to pick up, I can just, you know, the uh, the monetization of the revenue from the videos being successful will allow me to uh, up the production quality and say, you know, if they're, I want to have them movie, movie, but I, I want it to be, a, I want to have a hundred episodes where, and I say that loosely, but you can start from one and just binge and just go, and the story just goes. And you, and you, the writing. The writing makes it so bingeable. Like, cause I remember when I first saw it on TikTok and I would scroll to follow the story and it's like other people who don't know about it, it's like, you need to watch this mm -hmm. because the writing, how you written the characters, their personality and, um, you know, making some of them the underdogs like Pluto and things like that. Like it's very well crafted. And mm -hmm. I will say that. Um, because there's a lot of creators that write, but they don't keep in mind like the flow of the writing too. Um, so I do want to say that. Thank you. Great. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and I really wanted to get back into my play because I put a lot of things on the back burner. Uh, I've stopped streaming as much uh, to, to dedicate to the planets because I find out original content, especially with uh, the strikes going on with the writers and SAG Astra, uh, I feel like we have a responsibility as independent creators to create. I feel like there's, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around, but. It's fine. There, we either, I feel like we either get, in, as far as storytelling, we get short form content, mm -hmm. which like TikToks may say maybe a minute, or storytelling, you need to watch an entire, you know, stream like a, a Hulu, a Netflix show to get that storytelling. Otherwise, I feel like it's it's trends or pranks or things on YouTube that are, are one off. Like Mr. Beast will do like a challenge and you can see it, but it's not, oh, what's, what happens next? You know, find out next time. You know, it's not really a story. So I wanted to get into that YouTube series space and I found out myself being in a position where People like RDC and Caleb City and other creators, they're not my really like competition. I, I say that lightly, but 
I'm in competition with Hulu and Netflix because I can create my my TV show on my own. Like it's a TV show, uh, people can sit there and watch it. They can hook it up to their TV. The sound is going to be on par with these companies. Mm -hmm. The writing, the storytelling, uh, and I feel like I'm able to spread a gap between the characters that, you know, I can. Netflix can probably. I can probably replace an entire team at Netflix by myself. Oh, I bet and you I have can. To, yeah, and mm -hmm. I've had so many calls with, you know, Disney reps, people in very high places that, you know, we get on, it's like, oh, we're gonna do this for you, we're gonna do this for you, and then dead, nothing. And I'm like, and a lot of people are like, how are you not, how have you not been, what, what's, what are they waiting on? I was like, I don't know, it's quite possible that, you know, I, I intimidate some of these people, you know, I intimidate some of their positions because I've just been known to get into a space learn, absorb, and just dominate. So I'm just trying to, I'm just betting on myself right now and focusing on my community with the plan. It's like, whenever I go out, you know, I could not have dropped a plan of video in a year, but they're like, yo, Six Rings, Neptune, all mm -hmm. that. And I'm like, y'all, this really affected you. People tell me, you're the reason my kids know their planets. Right. Like, so that stuff like hits. So I'm like, I feel like I have, a, I'm sorry. I feel like I have a responsibility <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, you know, keep that going. And it's fun. Now that I can create it in a, a worldly platform, it's the universe. But I, I just think it's original content. A lot of people, they, they wait on maybe they, they do manga reviews, which is fine. Um, but I don't have to wait on anything. Like right. I can write whatever the plan is, you know, Mars can be on Mars, Pluto can be going to the Kuiper Belt, you know, this, anything could happen. It's just, as far as my independent creativity can go, I score all the music, so there's no copyrights or anything. Uh, it's just 100% me. And I feel like I wanna see that from other content creators. Just how much can you do on your own? I love that you create your own lane and you're not even worried about the other distractions or whoever is doing what. Yeah, yeah. You just focused on you and what benefits you and your community. And that's what I love about you as a person and as a creator in general. Thank you. Yeah, that means a lot. <laughs> to just see someone that's like very authentic about who they are. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you for being you because we need that, especially in the black community. Thank you for being you and being honest with yourself, with who you are, your content in general, and just, just being open and honest in general. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Of course. I meant that. <laughs> I meant that too. I can tell. <laughs>